Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now going to answer question number three, part one, from the June 2022 International A Level at Excel Pure Mathematics P2 paper. And this question is one of those from the new topic of proofs. And it says, show that the following statement is false. So this is going to be something which we use proof by um, counter example. Um, show that the statement that n plus 1 cubed minus n cubed is prime for all n values which are elements of the natural numbers. So the natural numbers are the numbers that you count with, like starting from 1, 2, 3, 4, the whole numbers, the basically the positive integers. Um, so they don't include um, 0, start from, you start from the number 1 um, and you go up in 1s. And we've got to prove that when we use the natural numbers, that when we put them into here, that there's going to be, um, well, the statement says that every time you're going to get a prime number, but we have to prove that this statement is false, that there will be a natural number, at least one natural number that we put into here, which will cause this statement to be false, that it won't give us a prime. So the best way to deal with this, or an easy way to deal with this, is just to start going through the natural numbers, starting from the first one, which is 1, and seeing does it give us a prime number or not. So we put n equals 1 in here, you'll have 1 plus 1 cubed minus 1 cubed, which is going to be 2 cubed minus 1, which is 8 minus 1, which is 7, and this is prime, so this doesn't prove it false. That's okay, that's prime. Um, when n equals 2, we're going to have um, 2 plus 1 cubed minus 2 cubed. That's going to give you 3 cubed, 3 cubed, sorry, 3 cubed minus 2 cubed. And that's going to give you 27 minus 8. 27 minus 8 is a 19. And that's also prime. That's so far, It's we haven't contradicted it yet. When n equals 3, we're going to have um, 3 plus 1 cubed minus 3 cubed. So that's 4 cubed, which is 64. So 4 cubed minus 3 cubed, which is 64 minus 27. Now 64 minus 27 is, just to make sure, you got 64 take away 27, gives us 37. Um, 37 is a prime number because neither the 3 going to it, of course 2 doesn't go into it, um, 5, 7, no, yeah, so it's a prime number, 37 is a prime number. So that hasn't proved our statement false yet, that's okay. When n equals 4, we're going to have n plus 1, 4 plus 1 cubed minus 4 cubed, which is, that's 5 cubed, which is 125 minus 4 cubed, which is going to be 64. So we've got 125 125 minus 64, which gives us 61. Okay, 61 is also a prime number. 3 doesn't go into it, nor does 2, nor does 4, nor does um, 5, 7. Nope, okay, so then we're going to try n equals 5. So when n equals 5, we're going to have 5 plus 1 cubed, which is 6 cubed. 5 plus 1 cubed minus 5 cubed, that's going to be... Um, 6 cubed minus 5 cubed, 6 cubed is 2, 1, 6, isn't it? 6 cubed, yeah, 2, 1, 6, minus 1, 2, 5, Ahem. so minus 125, that gives us 91, 91, now I th let's see if 91 is prime, 91, um, I think, 8 goes into that, 7 goes into that because 12 7s are 84 plus 7 is 91, yes, let's see, divide by 7, yeah, okay, so this is not prime, 91 is not a prime number because 7 goes into 91, 7 goes into 9 two times, remainder 2, yeah, it goes into 13 times, so therefore we found that when n is equal to 5, and we can say, and 5 is an element of the natural numbers, okay, then n cubed, n plus 1 cubed minus n cubed, n plus 1 cubed minus n cubed is not prime, okay, because 91 is not prime, because 
91 is equal to 7 times 13. 70 plus 21, right? So, therefore, okay, the statement... So it's best to just write this to make sure the statement that n cubed, n plus 1 cubed, n plus 1 cubed minus n cubed is prime for all n being element of natural numbers is false. Okay, so we've proved when n equals 5 that this statement is not true because it doesn't give a prime number. And there's the answer to 3 part 1. Um, just a simple proof by um, counter example. Okay, so that's how you do with it. And you should always write this final statement. Okay, um, that's part of these type of proof questions. You should write these final statements and show very clearly your steps. Um, and that's the answer. Okay, so now I'm going to go on to part two of this question. Given that the points A, B, and C lie on a circle that A, B is a diameter of this circle. Okay, so we can use our knowledge that we know from angles in circles, which is actually something that we learn in IGCSE, but we kind of revise it in AS, okay, and, you know, basically that rule is as follows. That when you have a circle, okay, and you have a triangle that's in the circle, and, you know, one part is the diameter of the circle, okay, one part is the diameter, like, for example, it says, a, B is the diameter, which is 1, 0, and 1, 0, and 3, minus 10. Okay, so let's say it's something like... Something like this. Okay, just say that's A, that's B. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing it 100% accurate, but just in the roughly right place. And C is 7 minus 6. Okay, so C is 7 minus 6. So if you want to make it more realistic, it will be more like this. That would be A, that would be B, and C would be somewhere over here. Somewhere over here. Okay, we got to prove that this is a right angle over here. Okay, we got to prove that this is a right angle. Okay, there's the center of the circle. Okay, so basically, what we should know is that um, <coughs> we know that the angles, the angle in a semicircle is a right angle. Okay, that's something we know for sure. That's one of the rules that we know. Okay, so if AB is the diameter, if AB is the diameter of the circle, okay, then what we can say, if AB is the diameter, then we know that the angle, we can say ACB must be 90 degrees. Okay, you can say then the angle ACB is equal to 90 degrees. That must be, sh that's, that's definitely true. So if we can prove that the angle ACB is 90, then we've proved that AB is the diameter. Okay, now there's different ways you can prove that this is 90. The easiest way to prove that this is 90 is by looking at the gradient of AC and BC and showing that those two gradients are perpendicular. You could also use Pythagoras' theorem. You could find the length AB and the length AC and the length BC and show that AC squared and BC squared, the sum of that is equal to AB squared. And that would also prove that this is a right angle, that this is the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle, because that's only true in a right angle triangle. But I think far easier 
is to prove that the gradient of AC and the gradient of BC are um, perpendicular to, to each other. So we can say if the gradient of AC multiplied by the gradient of BC is equal to negative 1, okay, if two gradients, you multiply them together, you get negative 1, um, you know, if that's true, then we can say that AC is perpendicular to BC. Okay, so what we need to do now is find the gradient of AC and BC. So let's try and find AC first. The gradient of AC, now this is A and this is C, so you've got the change in Y, which is 0, minus, minus 6, over the change in X, which is um, 1 minus 7. So that's going to give you 6 over negative 6, which is minus 1. Okay, so that's the gradient of AC. And the gradient of BC, if we look at the gradient of BC, you're going to have um, minus 10, yeah, minus 10, minus, minus 6. You've got negative 10, take away negative 6, over, and 3 minus 7. 3 take away 7, that's going to give you minus 10 plus 6, which is going to be minus 4. And 3 minus 7, which is also minus 4, which gives you 1. So we can see that the gradients are negative reciprocals of each other. Or we can say, we can say the gradient of AC multiplied by the gradient of BC is equal to negative 1 times 1, which is minus 1. Okay, so there, therefore we can say, therefore, we can say that um, AC is perpendicular to BC, okay, which means therefore that the angle ACB is equal to 90 degrees. Therefore, we can say that the triangle ABC, okay, um, uh, yeah, so we can say is right angled, as we know. Okay, so AB is the diameter. Okay, because the diameter is subtended by, or the, the angle subtended by the diameter is 90 degrees. Angle subtended by the diameter, the angle standing on the diameter is always 90 degrees. That's one of the rules that we know, we learn in IGCSE or GCSE work is a right angle always okay so that's the proof for this particular statement here okay that these points lie in the circle prove that ab is the diameter of the circle okay if ab is the diameter of the circle then the angle acb must be a right angle and for acb to be a right angle that means ac and bc must be perpendicular and we've proved that Therefore, that means AB must be the diameter of the circle. Simple as that. As I said, you could have also used Pythagoras, which would have taken longer. You could have found the distance AB, the distance AC, and the distance BC, and the square of those distances of, of a, a, um, C and BC um, added together would give you the same as the square of AB. And you would have realized that, they're, they're, you know, because of that, you've also proved that's a right angle triangle in which case AB is the diameter and ACB is the 90 degrees. All right, so there's the end of that question number two. Number three from um, Pure Mathematics P2 paper from June 2020. Other questions from this paper can be found in the link that will appear somewhere in this region over here. Other questions from this topic of proofs can be found in the link that appears over here. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link in the middle here. Thank you for watching and see you soon.